Hello! In this video, we're going to be looking at path to form in Houdini. Path to form allows us to deform geometry along some curves, so it can be text or graphics or test geometries from the side effects petting zoo. Let's jump into Houdini and have a look. So here in my scene, I'm going to hit the tab key and type font. And if we hit the W key, you can see, just going to kill the grid. You can see that we have some curves from our font. Uh, we're going to use these curves to push our geometry along it. So let's put there some text. We're also going to change the look of the font. So it's looking a little bit more interesting. And we're going to disable whole faces and adjust the tracking a bit to give it a bit of space. And next we're going to hit tab and put down a path to form. So if we hover over the uh, inputs, we can see that it needs some curves and some geometry. So we already made our curve. Now let's plug that in and we're going to hit tab and put down two for our geometry. And we're going to set the uh, primitive type to polygon end caps and just going to adjust some of these settings so that you know, we've got something to work with. And then I'm going to plug it in. So now I'm going to select that, hit the R key, W for shading, and we get bow ties. Uh, if we click on capture and align, we can set the orientation of our geometry. It just depends on, you know, your orientation of your geometry. So it's not always going to be this. And now if I template the font, you can see uh, we have some partial covering of the, the curves with our geometry that we created. And, you know, notice some jaggies because uh, we don't have enough resolution. So let's crank that up a bit, something like that. And now let's try to cover the entire length of the curve of each letter. And we can do that by clicking on map and deform. And where it says map length using, we're going to set this from geo length to curve length. So that's the maximum length of each uh, font, each letter. So if this is the effect that you're looking for, you need some neon fonts, then you're pretty much done. If you want to animate your geometry along the curve, then let's look at a couple other options. So this offset position allows us to just change the, um, the placement of the geometry to where we would like to uh, have it. This preserve volume, if we enable that, and with the path to form selected, hit the enter key in the viewport and you can see these handles come up. Uh, the green is the, the start of the geometry deformation and the red is the end. So you can grab these handles and just kind of like squish them around. And because we've just turned on the preserve volume, you can see that it's preserving volume. And if we kind of drag that throughout, you can see that the text gets skinnier. I'm going to kill this option because we're going to look at a couple other things. And uh, yeah, so the start and end behavior, it's by default set to extend. If we set it to clamp on both, that means that it's going to stop at some point. There you go. Uh, you can see where all the red this have stopped. So that's the end of the end of the line. Um, and the same for the green, uh, the starting point, it's, it's also going to do the same thing. So it looks like it's having a seizure, but it's just trying to, it's just trying to find its place. So, uh, here, if I grab the green handle, you can see that the geometry just stops moving. So again, depends on the effect that you're looking to create with, um, you know, whether it's font or, or some geometry, uh, like some sort of, uh, creature. Uh, you can use these options to control the look of your uh, result. Uh, if we set this back to extend, and we'll just shorten this a bit, and we click on the capture and align, you can have these options here in the capture region. Uh, we can just a little bit adjust that to give it a bit of an extension. And basically what that's doing is it's extending the, the start and end, so depending on what you've chosen it will push it out, but not force it along the curve. So when you animate, um, you know, when you move your geometry along the curve, it will, it will kind of stick out so it can give like a neat effect. 
and you're really just, uh, you know, using this offset position uh, control to, you know, you can keyframe it, for example, to to get it to move along your your curves like so, and get a a neat look um, of this uh, like open font result. Uh, next, if we change the uh, option enable scale in geometry deformations, and we change this base scale factor, that's just like an overall scale controller, and this saves us the hassle of having to go back to our source geometry and adjusting the, the scale there. You can also grab this handle to uh, make those adjustments in the viewport if you're, you know, maximized the, the 3D viewport to, to the full and you don't actually see this pane. Um, you also have the enable scale ramp. So if you choose one of the presets like steps, you can of course adjust, uh, you know, what kind of ramp shape you want to control your profile. And if we actually hit the D key, change this to gray background, you can see if we zoom in, you can see that parts of this kind of like a rail indicates to us uh, the, the shape that the geometry will have. So here, here it gets skinnier, but it's kind of like thick here. So when we drag our geometry down, you can see exactly where it corresponded on that rail preview is where it gets skinny. So this will give you like a preview of uh, what, how your geometry will warp along if you have like a profile enabled. Uh, we also have rotation, um, that's self-explanatory, rigidity as well. Uh, you know, we, we get sticks, which is not what we want for this example, but maybe it's something for your effect. Um, and then additionally, if you are using abstract curve shapes, you can uh, use this reverse curve and rechange the, the animation order of your, of your effect. And then lastly, you can also put down uh, different geometries and just prototype uh, very easily without any expense cost aside from just trying. Um, you can you can get much different results just by changing the orientation of something and plugging in a different geometry. I know that sounds obvious, but uh, it's true. So if we change this to X and Z, then it's going to stick outwards like this. And, you know, you can kind of do that with, uh, if you disable the scale ramp and get something uniform, then you could get that with, let's say, just like a poly, poly extrude. Uh, but, oh, lots of, lots of uh, previews. Uh, but if you enable the scale ramp, uh, you can, you can get like different, looks to your font, which you cannot necessarily easily do with, uh, you know, other SOP operators. So, um, yeah, that is the path to form in Houdini. Thanks for watching.